Let's do another example. This time we have a rational function. Um, f of x equals x plus 1 over x. So what are issues we have to do with here? Well, because of the denominator, there could be issues that make this thing undefined. And so if we think about the domain of this thing, the domain is going to be everything um, where, so that the denominator doesn't go to 0. So basically, we have to throw out x equals 0. That's not inside of our domain. Now, I often like to do domain with the discontinuity category together because problems with the domain often are associated to discontinuities. I mean, after all, um, to be continuous, your function has to be defined. The limit has to exist in the limit in the function after a degree. Well, if you're undefined, that's already an indication of a, of a discontinuity. So what's going on there? Well, as we approach x equals zero from the right, if we take the limit here of our function f of x, well, as you approach zero from the right, uh, you're going to end up with this one over zero plus, uh, which is positive infinity. And as you take the limit as x approaches zero from the left of f of x, you're going to end up with one over zero minus, which looks like a negative infinity. And so this is indication that we have some type of vertical asymptote at the y-axis. We'll put this on the screen a little bit later. Um, in terms of intercepts, right? Well, because x equals zero is outside the domain of the function, turns out there is no y-intercept, right? The y-intercept does not exist. In terms of x-intercepts, well, if we looked at the equation f of x equals zero, uh, this would imply we look at x plus one over x equals zero. Uh, this gives us that x equals negative one over x. Give myself a little bit more space there. Uh, times both sides by x, you get that x squared equals negative 1. I'm going to stop you right there. Uh, x squared can't equal negatives. It has to be non-negative. If we were to take the square root, we were getting some imaginary numbers at that point. So this tells us that x-intercepts also do not exist. So this graph has no x-intercepts nor y-intercepts. That might seem like bad news, but this is actually great news because if you have no x-intercepts or y-intercepts, this tells us that we can never touch the x-axis or the y-axis. That's going to help us draw our picture actually quite well. Um, in terms of symmetry, this graph does actually have some symmetry. I normally don't care about it, but if you look at f of negative x, you end up with negative x minus 1 over x, which if you factor that out, x plus 1 over x, that is factor out the negative 1, you end up with negative f of x. So this indicates that our function's odd. And so if we are graphing it, it should be symmetric with respect to the origin. All right, uh, so let's see, in behavior, this one's a good one to know as well. Um, if we take the limit as x goes to infinity of the function x uh, over one over x, well, what's gonna happen as x goes to infinity, the one over x is just gonna go to zero, it's gonna vanish. And so this thing will just look like the limit as x goes to infinity of x. And as this is a polynomial, it'll just look like infinity. Um, and similar things will happen as we take the left side, take the limit as x goes to negative infinity of x plus 1 over x. Same things happen as before. The 1 over x will go to 0, and this thing will look like the limit as x approaches negative infinity of here, x. This will go to a negative infinity. And in fact, this graph has what would commonly be called an oblique asymptote. This is some diagonal line where our function f of x will be approximately the same thing as x as you go to the extreme. So we're going to actually add that oblique asymptote to our graph in just a second. Uh, let's look at the derivative first. Well, actually, now that I moved down a little bit, I guess we are kind of in the right spot to start graphing this thing. So what did we, what did we say earlier we had? So we have this oblique asymptote, which is the diagonal line y equals x. We get something like that. And we get something like that. And then we also had a vertical asymptote at the y-axis. There was no x-intercepts, no y-intercepts, but we have these inter we, uh, we do have these asymptotes right here. Um, so we're going to find some critical numbers by looking at the first derivative. y prime is going to equal 1 minus 1 over x squared. Um, if we set this equal to 0, we end up with 1 equals 1 over x squared, uh, which gives us x squared equals 1 which gives us x equals plus or minus 1. So we get some critical numbers at plus or minus 1. Um, I mean, critical numbers, we also should be worried about where does the derivative not exist? 
which there's the same domain issues we had before. Uh, if you divide, if X is zero, you're going to divide by zero. But don't worry about that necessarily because the original function was undefined at zero. The derivative will also be undefined at zero. And that's not a critical number. That's just a discontinuity from before. And so let's add these critical numbers to our graph here. If we take X to equal one, plug, plug one into the original function, uh, you're going to end up with one plus one over one, which is two. And so we're going to plot that point there. We're going to get X is one, Y is two. So we get a point right here, one comma two. Um, I want to figure out what happens at negative one, which we can plug that into the function as well, but we can also use symmetry since we know it's odd. We know there's going to be a point right here at negative one comma negative two. These are our critical numbers. Uh, for the second derivative, uh, we take the derivative of this bad boy right here. And so that's going to give us positive 2 over x cubed. In which case, that actually never equals 0. If you have a fraction equal to 0, it's because the numerator was equal to 0, which here the numerator is 2. Um, there are problems at x equals 0, but again, that's a discontinuity. That's not a, that's not a point of inflection. So what this tells us is that the derivative could change its inflection at 0. So we do care about it. I mean, don't be ignoring it. The first and second derivative are undefined at zero. And so that's going to come into our sign chart that we're going to build right over here. So the numbers we want to care about are negative one, zero, and positive one. And so what does the second derivative do at these locations? Well, looking at the function two over x cubed, uh, two is always positive. X cubed will have the same sign that x does. And so when x is positive, the second derivative will be positive. And when x is negative, the second derivative will be negative there as well. So we have a minimum at negative 1. We have a maximum at x equals 1. And because you went from a negative to a positive, this indicates a change of inflection, right? Uh, when you're less than 0, your graph will be concave down. When you are greater than 0, you're going to be concave upward. And so putting this all together, let, let's take our point 1 x equals one here, which is gonna be a local minimum. The graph has to approach infinity when you're to the left of, to the right of zero, and it has to approach this asymptote as well. And so we get this concave up picture right here. Um, it went from decreasing to increasing uh, because it's a local minimum. And then by symmetry, we're gonna get the same type of picture down here. When you do these curve sketches, you often get more information than's actually necessary to draw the entire graph. Those type of redundancies are okay. We like them uh, because it helps us get a better understanding of the graph right here. And so this is our final picture. Let's see how we did. The next page, we can look at a computer generated image right here and voila, we have exactly that picture. Um, we see the two little cup shapes. One is concave up right here. The other one's concave down right here. It was increasing, then decreasing. It was decreasing, then increasing. The oblique asymptote is illustrated. I did not include the vertical asymptote here just because it's the y-axis, and so you can't really see it very well if I were to draw it there. So we did pretty good.